And here is what our final Armor All solution looks like. Um, it does look like a milky solution, and that is because it is basically a silicone emulsion with a handful of other ingredients. So the first thing we're gonna do is prepare our silicone emulsion. In this recipe for 1,000 grams, I'm gonna be adding 50 grams of dimethicone. You can get different grades. I'd recommend going with a low viscosity. A little bit more. There we go. We're going to add 20 grams. As I was running out of room, I have switched over to a larger beaker and I just have to finish adding the TMN10 and I need to add 15 more grams. That's it. We're going to use polysorbate 80 as a co-emulsifier. So I'm looking to add 10 grams. A little extra won't harm anything. As I mentioned before, I want to add a light stabilizer as I want my armor all to kind of protect the interior of the car. So I'm going to add five grams of a Tinuvin 400. This is a light stabilizer. So it absorbs UV so that it can't damage the vinyl or plastic. And finally, no formula is complete without a pleasant smell. So I'll add 0.1 or actually one gram of fragrance. Now we'll add a stir bar to this silicone phase and stir it until it's uniform. Okay, now that we have our silicone solution prepared, uh, next, we are going to prepare the aqueous phase to make a armor all type product that was going to have, say, a 15 or 18 month shelf life. Uh, what I could do is I could add some water soluble polymers to the water, essentially something to slightly thicken it. Uh, guar gum, gum arabic, xanthan gum, some of the things that you might use um, in your cooking are things that you can use. For the aqueous phase, we're going to have 900 grams of water. We will take a portion of that water. We'll add three grams of xanthan gum. We'll stir this and just let that gum swell in this small amount of water. We'll let this soak for about 15 minutes. And I'm going to put in two grams of potassium sorbate just to act as a preservative so that nothing grows in my armor all. Just so you know, there are techniques to give it some really long-term stability. That's typically what I do when I'm developing a commercial product. Now we will add 10 grams of glycerin and we'll add that preservative. The glycerin and the potassium sorbate will dissolve very easily with just gentle stirring. After 15 minutes, you can see that our xanthan gum has swelled in the small amount of water from this recipe. So now we are going to add our water to this stainless steel pot. And that's because we're gonna homogenize and I don't want to do that in glass. Because if I hit the side with the mixer, I can shatter it. So we'll put our water in this stainless steel pot. Now we will add our xanthan gum, which has swelled significantly.
and we will use we use a high shear blade to get this gum fully dissolved. We'll let that mix for about 15 minutes. After about 15 minutes of mixing, all of the xanthan gum is in solution. You do see a few air bubbles floating around, but that won't be a problem. So now we are ready to homogenize. I have my aqueous solution in place. I'm going to lower the homogenizer under and below the surface. Now, once we have our silicone phase completed and our aqueous phase completed, the next thing we're going to do is blend them together using very high shear conditions until we've established a stable silicone oil in water emulsion. That's our final product for our armor, our armor all today. Once we have finished that, we'll head over to the car and uh, give it a test. We have the homogenizer running. And now I will be pouring in the silicone, but because I thickened the water with xanthan gum, I will need to stir it by hand in order to get things to move around. Now, because I increased the viscosity of the water with xanthan gum, I wasn't getting the turnover in the uh, pot that I wanted. I had a lot of dead zones, and that's why I was stirring it by hand. So what I've done here is I've put the high shear mixer down at the bottom of the pot, and I've got the homogenizer uh, down below the surface. That way, I'll have no dead zones, and if I let it mix for about four minutes with uh, high shear mixing as well as that homogenizer running at full speed, I will get a nice nano emulsion of this uh, uh, product. Now in case you're wondering if this process is actually scalable, on production size it's not uncommon to get dual and triple shaft mixers. So you can have mixers that have one blade scraping the sides of the tank while there's a high shear blade at the bottom while there's still a third shaft, which is actually a high shear or a rotor stator type mixer. After four minutes, you can see that we have a nice white emulsion. And here's what our final Armor All solution looks like. Let's take my new solution. There we go, brand new bottle of Armor All. Okay, so the homogenizing is done. Here is our stable emulsion of our version of Armor All. Uh, now to go through the ingredients again, because I didn't get a chance to describe them while I was mixing them. Again, 90% of the formula is just good old fashioned distilled water. Uh, in order to make sure nothing is gonna grow in this aqueous coating, I did add some potassium sorbate. There's a whole bunch of broad spectrum uh, biocides that you can add into these types of coatings. Now to give my product a longer shelf life, I did add just a touch, 0.3%, of xanthan gum. You can play with the concentration of this. You don't need a lot, but what it does is it gives the water a little higher viscosity. I put it in there so that the silicone emulsion doesn't uh, eventually separate. So uh, I did put in a little glycerin. What this does is this just slows down the rate of drying of water. It's a humectant, so I just put a little bit in the in the formula. Uh, I'm gonna put the formula in the description along with a list of some of the ingredients in case you wanna try making this yourself. Uh, that's all that goes into the aqueous phase. Now, the silicone oil, I use dimethicone 500. You can use lower viscosities, basically the 500. You can use a 350, um, but the lower the viscosity, the easier it is gonna be to make that emulsion. Uh, let's see, I did wanna add a little fragrance because it's fall. I happen to have a sample of, this one's called Forest Cabin Fragrance. You just wanna add a touch of it 
Um, but you can pick any fragrance you want um, from different fragrance suppliers. Now, the two emulsifiers I used, uh, Tween 80 or Polysorbate 80, uh, was one of the emulsifiers, and then TMN 10, which is a ethoxylated um, surfactant. So that helps emulsify the silicone in water. I also want my recipe to actually add a little bit of UV protection uh, to the uh, seats and dashboard of my car. So I added a little bit of a light stabilizer. So this is a UV absorber. So it's gonna absorb some of those UV rays so that it doesn't damage the plastic. I added a Tinuvin 400. If you really wanna beef up the um, UV uh, protection for a product, you can also add hinderdamine light stabilizers. Uh, but again, I'm going to be applying this, um, you know, a couple times a, a year just to keep the, uh, the seats nice and soft. Um, so I just went with uh, just one light stabilizer. So that's all there is to it. Uh, using a high powered mixer or as a homogenizer, as you saw uh, in, um, in my homogenizing process is really going to be helpful. So now uh, let's head down to uh, my car and see how this stuff works. Alright, so I've gone over the interior of both my Tahoe and the Mini, and uh, the Spray Armor All version I made works really well. It doesn't dry too fast, but um, it does dry and it does not leave uh, you know any kind of syrupy surface or anything like that. If you make this yourself, I do recommend go easy on the silicone oil. You don't want to um, put too much in there and um, give your car a slimy feel, but um, but 5% is a good starting point. If you want a little bit more gloss, you know, you could go up eight, maybe try 10%, um, but uh, just be careful. You will get a glossy appearance if that's what you're looking for, but it will feel really slick uh, because that's kind of one of the jobs of the uh, silicone oil. Um, don't go overboard on the uh, UV protectant either. Uh, you just need a little bit. And, you know, if you make a, a lighter formulation like I did and you just plan on wiping down your vehicle interiors once a month, I think you should be in good shape. Once you get the raw materials, as you'll see, this is mostly a water-based product. And so uh, you can make your own version of Armor All for days uh, with that recipe. Again, I'll put that in the description. Uh, I've also got a really good... Um, uh, rain repellent that I made for my windshield. I'll put a link to that in the corner. That's a pretty cool recipe that works awesome, especially if you're changing out your windshield wiper blades. I recommend putting that on your windshield so it's a very slick surface and it'll make your wipers last a long time. And then uh, if you guys really want to dive into some chemistry, um, I'll put a link at the end of this video to a formulation. It's a, it's a true ceramic coating formulation uh, that I prepared in the lab as well, and it works really well. Uh, on the exteriors of uh, vehicles. I put it on the Pilot, I've put it on uh, the Mini, and um, uh, check out that video if you're interested. Uh, please uh, give the video a like if uh, you're into seeing how a lot of these automotive products are made. Uh, that's kind of what I do. I'm a product developer uh, by day, but I like to work on uh, my own little projects in the lab. 
um, just like I am here. And then obviously I got a ton of uh, auto repair videos on minis, Tahoes, Cherokees. Um, so check those out if you're interested. All right, that's it from uh, the lab. You guys have a good day. If you got any questions, leave them in the comments section below. Thanks for watching. Check out the description for more information and hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see more videos.